All right, we're working on this uh, Lowrance Elite 7 uh, HDI. And uh, the customer complaint was this unit was dead. We already fixed that issue. Um, and uh, we're just looking at the board, doing some preventive maintenance and, and, and things like that. There's actually a sonar issue, which we're troubleshooting. And then we noticed um, debug UR interface here. Now I've seen this on many, many units. I've never had time to play with it, but I figured we got it open. We got a UR interface right there, clear as day. Let's take a crack at it. Let's let's see what's going on. Let's see what we can what we can find out. Can't dedicate too much time to this because it's kind of sort of like just playing around. A little bit of security research, I guess, but. We got stuff to repair, but it's just too tempting. So let's go for it. So we know this is ground. What's this? Fluctuating. Is it? Uh, USB to TTL. Interface there. Uh, we're just going to use uh, Minicom as our terminal program here. Let's fire it up. TAC S is set up. Zero port. Uh, in this case, I'm using a USB, or I'm sorry, GTY USB 1. Uh, USB 0 is actually my multimeter. I'm uh, going to leave everything. Uh, hardware flow control needs to be off. Oh, that's uh, F. Flow control off. That's so we can transmit to the device. Okay, and here we go. Uh, I'm going to power up. Power up this Elite 7. Let's see what happens. Look at that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's running Linux for sure. There's some good information in this, uh, in the boot up process. I'll save it for later and analyze. Uh, let's see if we can drop to a shell. See if it's password protected or what's going on. A lot of times you can just drop right into a shell. All right, so it says please press enter to activate this console. That's convenient. Press enter. Ah, okay. Try some default stuff. Okay, we went through the uh, the logs, and it looks like they're using uh, U-Boot as the bootloader. Uh, older version of Linux kernel also. Um, so, I mean, there's a few ways we could attack this. Um, U-Boot directly, we could, we could dump the contents of memory, get a firmware image that way. We could download firmware and um, try to extract some information that way. Um, but I think we're going to try to do a, a glitch attack on the on the flash. Okay, so uh, here's the memory chip here. Um, looks like it's a 4 gig uh, NAND EEPROM. So I think what we're going to do, uh, looking at the data sheet, Let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Um, obviously, we don't have a reset pin, so I think we can try attacking the command latch enable. Has to be brought high to uh, to send commands to this. Basically, let's, let's check. So yeah, the command latch enable input signal is used to control loading of the operation mode command into the internal command register. Yeah, okay, there we go. So uh, command is latched into the command register that I open. Da, 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 da. Signal when CLE is high. Okay, so uh, CLE, command latch enable, has to be high in order to load uh, mode commands into the command register. So I'm thinking if we just keep that low, that can't happen. So, uh, let's see. So where's CLE? Looks like it's pin 16. 
So we want to try to ground pin 16 and see what happens, then we'll try to boot it. Okay. And there we go. So what we did is um, we were glitch attacking the um, the CLE pin, which is a uh, command latch enable. So we were glitching it. So we were injecting faults as the processor was was loading the kernel. So we were corrupting the kernel image, and we corrupted it to a certain point. We failed a few times. Um, and it would just die, uh, and then we corrupted it at just the right point where um, we dropped to a shell. We dropped to a rescue kernel.